We're here to discuss Panhandle Health District quarterly meeting with Don Duffy. I'll turn it over to you. Great. Thank you, Commissioner. Well, as always, I try to get up and visit with you on a quarterly basis just to give you an update. I'm sure Tracy does as well on kind of some of the things that are happening. Um, lots of good happening with the health district. Uh, they're in a good financial position. Um, we're, we're just happy that uh, COVID's behind us and we're really launching into the work that we really enjoy. You know, we have, of course, the opioid settlement funds. That's very exciting work. And we were happy to, as you know, you are allocating that to us. We uh, transferred, you know, $4,400. Um, let me see if I can find that quickly here. I uh, misquote to you. Yeah, $4,400 to the Shoshone County, actually Shoshone County Ambulance Service for their work in opioid use disorder. And $22,700 went to the Shoshone County Treatment Court. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, your prosecuting attorney, his first name's Benjamin. I forget mm -hmm. his last name. Ben Allen. Yeah. Uh, he wants to visit to talk more about those kinds of funds. So we're trying to get our schedules together. And I might just run up here and have lunch with him, chat oh. with him about that. Because with their ILED program that, that actually the health district started down in Kootenai County, they want to expand that, so we'll be talking more about that. Good. Forward. Yeah. Uh, just some interesting information for you. Uh, this this is a report showing septic permits. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> back at this. It always yeah. seems to come back to water quality. <laughs> um, but interesting, the, the top graph there, this measures the fiscal year of 2019 through 2023. Our fiscal year runs from July 1 through June 30. So okay. we just ended our fiscal year 2023. And the top, the top is, um, the blue are new permits. And as you can see in the five counties, it's been dropping. Well, that's not true in Shoshone County. Yeah. You can see, um, 2021 we thought was the biggest year for most, but you did more than that in 2022, and 10 more of those happened in 2023. So permits are are growing here in your county, and um, we'll see what the next few years bring for you. But I felt that was interesting. Yeah. The, the yellow are just site evaluations, uh, and not too much happening there. And there's been a, just a couple of repair permits. Uh, okay. Probably should be more repair permits, is my guess. But anyway, growth continues in Shoshone County. That's for sure. So yes. I wanted to share that with you Thank this you. morning. Um, another another challenge, and I know Tracy has heard about this before, and that has to do with our our food establishment program. You know, when we go in and we issue permits, so. The way that works is we are required once a year to visit every eating establishment in the five counties. And that's, we don't warn them that we're coming. It's, we just show up and we're looking for things like, is their water temperature hot enough in their dishwasher? Are they wearing gloves when they're preparing food? Is food in the, in their refrigerated area, is it the proper temperature, keeping it cold so that it does, you don't get E. coli down the road. And uh, that's been a good program for us. It's very much educational based. I don't remember the last time we closed down a restaurant. And I've been with these food inspectors and I've gone in with them and I, they, they'll see somebody without wearing gloves and they're preparing cheese or meat or something. What did they, about the, cleanliness of the sanitation of the all of that uh, the operating equipment yeah all of that is included tracy yeah. and then and they've seen where there's been some problems and we'll say hey we're going to come back and if we come back and it's still an issue potentially that would be a violation but i haven't seen any of those i the food establishments do care in general about healthy food being prepared but the problem with the program are its costs State statute tells us what we can charge to go into these restaurants. They set those permits. We have the delegated authority from the state to go into these food establishments, but they set the rates. Well, that last rate was set back in 2018. So obviously our costs have gone up. 
-hmm. And I want to just, and there's no homework for you on this, but we're working with the Idaho Association of Counties throughout the state. We're hopeful that they at some point can make this one of their priorities. In our county, or in our, the total of county costs, our costs exceeded our revenues by $316,000 in the last fiscal year. And I've broken that down by county. So you can see at Shoshone County, it was about $14,000 over our revenue were our costs to implement this program. And what we'd like to do is we want to continue to have the delegated authority to go into these restaurants, but we would like to set those fees. Mm-hmm. just like we do mm-hmm. with our septic permits. We rarely increase those fees, even though they're still much lower than Spokane. But we would like the opportunity to set those. By statute, we cannot make a profit on these things. We just have to cover our costs. Yeah. So that's the play we're making with IAC. I'm just, again, I'm just informing you, you know, any support that you could give to that. I know it's a touchy mm-hmm. issue. I, I understand that, you know, our restaurants often work on a shoestring budget, uh, and and we want to be sensitive to that. But right now, we are only covering 50% of our costs. Yeah. Heck, if we could yeah. just cover 75% of our costs, we would consider that to be a real a wonderful thing. Um, you know, I don't know how I feel that the restaurant should bear all of this cost. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we have a responsibility to keep everyone healthy. But this kind of, this kind of deficit is a challenge for us and it's happening around the state too. So that's just kind of to inform you some of the areas that we're, we're, we're working on. So speaking of the state, again, just from an awareness perspective, as you remember, we had the um, House Bill 316 a few, three years ago now, or it will be three years ago, where prior to House Bill 316, you know, 80% of our revenue comes from grants and fees. 20% comes back then, pre-House Bill 316. 10% came from the counties and 10% came from the state which gave the state some latitude on what they could ask us to do. Well, with House Bill 316, that entire remaining 20% now is borne by the counties. And the thought with the state back then, which has, I think it has some merit to it, is that with Medicaid expansion, the counties no longer had an indigenous fund. So, indigent fund, and that savings was more the way they perceived it, and I think it's true in most counties, that savings was more than what they were, they were that 10% the state was paying. So I know that's a bit of a history, but I'm getting to something here. (laughs) Now the state no longer funds the health district. So if the health district's costs exceed their revenue, it's borne by the counties, plain and simple. It's simple math. Well, now the state's starting to come back to us. They're asking us to do tasks that we're calling unfunded mandates. You know, one small example is the work we do with harmful algae bloom. In the past, DEQ analyzes the water. We do the reporting. Now DEQ is saying, we don't have the manpower to do what we're doing. We want the, we want the health districts to take on some of this role. It's a small request, really. We could probably absorb it without too much trouble. Now, however, the state has come. We talked a moment ago about food establishments fees. The Mm -hmm. state is coming, who is the authority to monitor all of our assistant living facilities. They have that statutory authority to monitor those. They're now coming to the health districts and saying, we want you to inspect their their kitchens. First of all, Kitchen's not a restaurant, and that's fine. I understand they look at us as the experts, and they should, but they want us to go in and start managing, like we do the food establishments, all of these assistant living facilities, which there's over a 100 in the five northern counties. And it's needed. (laughs) It is needed, Tracy. I agree with you completely, and we're happy to do it, but they need to fund that. Otherwise, guess what? You bear the burden of that cost. 
So as the seven health districts, we've kind of stuck our heels in the ground on this one, and we've said, no, we're happy to help you, Department of Health and Welfare, but you're going to need to fund that. And um, I have been very vocal about that. I've, I've seen a few of my counterparts that are kind of wavering on that, but I just cannot ask you to bear the burden of that cost. Uh, the state has, if they are the regula mm -hmm. regulated authority, they are the authority to regulate these, they need, if we're going to do their job for them, they yeah. need to fund us to do that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I agree. So just kind of keeping you aware, I, I'm, again, there's nothing that for, I even went to our attorney, Mark Lyons, and asked him, do they, can they force us to do this? And he said no. So we'll kind of see going forward what happens with those kinds of things. Let's see, just a couple of other just housekeeping items, I guess. Uh, we have a new board member, Dr. Duke Johnson. Um, he represents Kootenai County. He was voted in at our last Board of Health meeting. And also, I guess more for you, Commissioner Cassidy, we're, we're, we're asking you to think about is there a different day or time for our Board of Health meetings? We're, we're getting we're not getting great attendance yeah and so uh, our chairman has asked for us to consider looking is there a different day or time that would be more convenient for attendance to our meetings so far it's been good for me other than there's mm -hmm. been a time or two I've had other IAC meetings or conferences sure but, um, anytime during the week and especially mornings Mornings would be better for you, maybe then like now it's 12. Or, to or early afternoon. It's that, okay. I mean, that, that still, works. still works. Yeah, sometimes I'll come in and come, go to meetings and then I'll leave to head towards. Okay, gotcha. So, so far, there. the current date and time works for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, that I'm just kind of doing a straw poll on that, so we'll, we'll see. Will you be there on the 21st? Yep. It's on Great. my calendar, yeah. Wonderful, because we have a few that are going to be gone that day, and I just okay. want to make sure we get four so oh, we have yeah. a quorum. I was there so, one time when it was just the two of us, I think. Yeah, it sometimes happens. <laughs> or three of us. Yeah, yeah. and um, it's tough to, well, you know, if you don't yeah. have a quorum, well, it's, it's hot, well, can you, what can you do yeah. other than blab for an hour and get nothing done? So yeah. Yeah. that's kind of where we are. Anyway... Um, yeah, I think that's kind of where we are. I don't really have anything else for you. What What do you have for me? Um, I'm just kind of glad that our county is utilizing those opioid funds and yeah, and various programs. And and Ben's been good at applying for all that. And I think Keisha has too. Mm -hmm. but, you know, uh, Commissioner, I I my the my favorite part of our program is when we send this money out to partners. Mm -hmm. You know, otherwise I have to manage it internally. Yeah. And um, I, I not, it wouldn't break my heart if all of our funds went out to partners. We, we start the 1st of October. We're meeting with every superintendent in the five northern counties to talk to them about what can we do to help you in your schools with methamphetamine and opioid drugs, yes. fentanyl. Yeah. What can we do? We have some funding. How can we help you? And uh, we, we're setting up those meetings. We're coming with them with ideas that we could help them implement. But wow, if I that would be another example of getting that money back into our community partners rather than us creating programs within Panhandle Health District. These and to are the help things. education to prevent yeah. getting them yeah. there to that was so important. And all of our programs that we're going to present to them is all about prevention for the most part. And I think that's the key. Mm -hmm. I really do. I'm excited right. to get that. Yeah, that would be yeah. nice to get out there. So, you know, as you and I look forward to talking to Ben, but if you hear of any way that these funds could be used, and it, it, and it only has to, even in a small way, be related to opioid use, we would love to get that into your communities. And so, uh, we'll, more, to, more to come on that for sure, but um, yeah, your counties are doing some great, great work. I think of the, you know, seven applicants, you got two of the funds, both of yours were approved. We had to turn down some. They just didn't fit the criteria we were looking for. But yeah, so we'll we'll have another application process that will begin in January, unless we hear of something 
really life changing before that. And maybe Ben has something, so I'm excited. To talk to you. <laughs> and let's see. I think that's that's all I've got for you. Anything else? No, I just appreciate your stance on the on the state paying more, and you know, because that's one of the hard parts we're having right now with the county is. You know, with inflation, things cost more, and you it's know, a they're, challenge, isn't it? They, they've they've made a, a quite a bit of money over the last few years. Their budgets, you know, they've they've had reserves, and so and we don't. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully, yeah, yeah, they appreciate that. Well, you bet. You know, we have a number that I I live by, and that's nineteen percent. That nineteen percent of our budget comes from our counties. We're the lowest of any health district mm -hmm. by far with that, and. It, inflation is tough to keep it there, but that's what we're after. Yeah. And so if we have to say no, we will. Appreciate that. All right. All right. Thank this, you very much. So this thank year you. Our, rate, our rates did go down a little bit than what we paid last yeah. year. Oh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. I've done well with that. Any more discussion? No. No. We'll just adjourn the meeting. Okay.